Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Joseph Wilkins, who is in Salt Lake City. How are you doing, Joseph? I'm great. Thanks, John. Good to be here. Yeah, and just like myself, Joseph's a bit of an interloper. You can tell by his accent. He's originally <laughs> from the UK, just as I'm originally from Ireland. So two fellow def- together. Fellow defector. Yeah, exactly. And Joseph uh, founded Procreative Studios in 2000, where his team produced infomercials, TV spots, and web sales videos. And now, as you know, viewing habits have moved away from TV, moved more into, you know, into video and especially into creating viral videos. And you have seven or eight rather simple ways, simple steps any business can follow to make a video go viral. And your, your site is funnysalesvideos.com. And goodness knows we need some humor. <laughs> so yeah um so joseph as you were pivoting kind of more into into video and from what you guys were doing before how did you come up upon the funny sales video kind of element of it well i mean as most businesses at some point do it was a function of our clients asking for it and that's really why we decided to pivot away and it's kind of funny for the first 15 years in business, you know, producing what I would call, you know, straight pitch kind of videos for TV and infomercial and for the web. Um, When clients would call us and say, hey, we saw this really funny video that another company did or a competitor, we want to do something like that. We would always, always give them the same response. Sorry, we don't do funny. It's a specialized kind of video. And the, the, the pitfall is the worst thing that you can be is try to be something that you're actually not and end up looking silly. Mm -hmm. So that's why for 15 years, we basically said no. And then after so many years and obviously diminishing returns on the projects that we were doing, we said, okay, we need to make a concerted effort and really learn how to do this well, if we're going to do it. So it was really just, you know, the tail wagging the dog. Yeah, and what's really interesting about that, Joseph, and uh, as we start to get into this is, is well, let's face it, humor is very subjective, obviously. Yes. Um, it's, it doesn't trans, and often doesn't translate or, you know, cross cultures sometimes. Um, so there's a lot, as you say, there's a lot of pitfalls. And then the other part, especially, is trying to be something that you're not, because, I mean, I've even noticed recently you've got some brands uh, that you know operate in a particular way and have a particular culture and all of that, but trying to be kind of cool at the same time. And you're like going, no, this is jarring. It's not actually helping you. It's jarring because I can tell it's not you. Yes. Yeah, that's a a great observation. Um, Having said that, I still am of the opinion, and obviously it's a biased opinion, but I'm of the, the opinion that every brand on the planet can use humor if they do it right. Because every brand's customer is a human being who has emotions, who has you know responses and enjoys a good story, enjoys smiling, enjoys laughing. And the I can't think of a better way to connect with a potential customer than to start with a smile. And that's basically what we do. Yeah. So let's get let's let's um, get into your process, because as you said, there's a lot of pitfalls. You could go astray very easily, easily on something like this. So uh, wh- where does one start if one wants to do a yeah. sales video or a viral video? So I'll be really quick because I could go on for hours about this. But b- before before I get into the eight steps, I think it's important to understand well, why. Why do I want to do this? And as somebody who has been in this industry of creating videos that sell products in one way or another for 20 years now, I have never seen any, any repeatable process that gets the kinds of results that this does. Just a very quick example. For the first 15 years that we were in business, the biggest video view that we ever got on a video was one video that we did for a brand that had a pretty big following and we got 100,000 views on YouTube, which we thought was pretty good. This wasn't a funny video. 
But the very first campaign that we ever did, once we assembled our team that I can talk about in a minute in our steps, very first funny sales video that we launched about five years ago was for a super niche SaaS product um, and very small following. Within a few months, we had 7 million views on that campaign. And more importantly, $500,000 in sign-up subscriptions from those from that one campaign. Fast forward to today, our biggest campaign has close to 100 million views wow. and just millions and millions. These are, if you do it right, these are literally company sales funnel transformational videos. So again, that's from a bias source, but in 20 years, I've never seen anything that works as well as what I'm about to very quickly explain. So step one, you got to do your homework. And most people listening know this. It's Marketing 101. You would never write a letter, walk to the post box, and then decide who to address it to. You have to understand in as granular level as you can, who is the target for this video and what is the action that you want them to perform? Those are the two things you got to establish. And, and I have a free ebook that goes into a lot more detail that you can maybe put a link into the show notes, but yeah. you got to start with your research. So once you've, you've done your research, you understand the pain points of these people that you're trying to talk to that now you got to start brainstorming. And this is where a lot of people get scared. And I tell people brainstorming is all about bad ideas. It's not about quality, it's about quantity. And this goes in, in lots of different elements of business, right? If you get together in a conference room, you're trying to solve a problem, you want to throw out as many bad ideas because one bad idea yeah. could trigger somebody else to say, well, yeah, that, that may not work, but what if we shifted it? What if we turned it upside down? And by the way, and there's a there's a there's a super example of this that I read in a book many years ago, but it was about an electricity company, I think up in Alaska or, or maybe up in the top of Canada. But anyway, they were losing millions every year with snow on the power lines right out in the middle of nowhere. And so they had exactly what you did. They had a brainstorming session and the first they said, OK, no, no bad ideas. And the first person said, well, you know, there's loads of polar bears around there. Maybe we could get the polar bears, uh, you know, to help. And they said, what? Like, they said, well, you know, get them to shake the poles or something. And somebody said, well, how would you get polar bears to shake the poles? And he goes, well, we'd have to chase them, scare them, and maybe they'd jump on the poles. And I said, how do we do that? Well, maybe with helicopters. And actually, it ended up in the end, is somebody said, why don't we just use the helicopter blades to um, blow the, sm the snow off? And that's what they do today yeah that that's a perfect example mm -hmm. not a non-linear approach to solving problems yeah. where the sky is the limit and in our, in my world when you're coming up with an idea for a funny sales video you're really only looking at two things who's the main character in this video and what's the problem that they have those are the only two things don't worry about any of the rest of the details and so we actually when we take on a project we will sit in a room and come up with 50 bad ideas that's our goal and then once we've got 50 bad ideas, we will typically distill it down as an agency. We're going to produce our or, or present our top five ideas to our client. And then between us, you know, we pick our concept. We're still nowhere near a script. We're mm -hmm. just saying, you know, what kind of a character and it has to be relatable in some form or fashion to your customer avatar that you've defined in step one. Anyway, so step three is now to start scripting. And a lot of people are surprised when they find out we have about eight script writers on any given project. You've probably watched the TV show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Mm -hmm. The most successful lifeline is ask the audience. And so the more people you can get on this writing team, the better the ideas will be. And so what we typically do is we'll start out with a rough draft that is nothing more than the copy points, the marketing copy points that we know somebody needs to internalize to be able to move them into action. Then we bring in a script writer that's nothing more than a storyteller to take the character, take those copy points and weave together a three minute ish story arc then we bring in at least five trained comedians. That step four is bringing in the comedy. 
because nobody really cares about your video if it's all about selling. It has to has to start with a attention grabbing opening hook. And you can go look at examples at funnysellsvideos.com of how we've done that in each of our videos. But then we have to continue to hook you every 10, 15 seconds. A lot of people say your videos are three minutes long. And we say, yeah, and they actually outperform the versions that we cut that are shorter than that because we keep your attention. And if we've got your attention, we can spoon feed you a vegetable here and there that may taste a little yucky, but we're going to still keep you with the taste of the entertainment of the rest of the video. So that step four is adding all of the comedy in, and we typically do it in a shared brainstorm, Google Doc or Dropbox paper where everyone is commenting, everyone's, you know, if you think about Saturday Night Live, they put a whole bunch of funny people in a writer's room, lock them in there for, for a few days, and they'll come out with some really good stuff. So we try to create that virtually. Um, so once you've added the comedy, step five is the actual production. Once you've got a really good script and you've tested it on some people who fit your customer demographic to make sure, you know, I may think something's funny, but if it's for a teenager, there's no point asking me if it's funny. Right. You got to test it. Um, and that goes for a, a lot a quick, of these. Just a, yeah, just a quick question, Joseph. When you start out with the process at the beginning and identifying the core problem and the key uh, the key demographic or avatar that you're after how often do you find that companies sometimes struggle with that definition because we all think we know that but often yes. when you ask people oh, it, we're a little more vague that's a great question and we don't believe any of our customers <laughs> nothing nothing that they send us is gospel what we do is we'll we'll take that we'll read it then we'll set it aside and we always go through a process that your listeners should be doing of looking for at least 100 independent customer reviews to read. That exercise alone will give you more information about why people actually buy your product or service and who they are and what kind of messaging they respond to. And some people will say, well, I don't have 100 customer reviews. Go to your nearest competitor. There's some, the, the data is out there um, and you're not looking for individual opinions. You're, look, you're looking for trends. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's how I would say, you know, if, if you're not quite sure what your messaging is, who your customer is, go find them because they're out there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, sorry. So you were on to step five. The yeah, production. step five is the actual production. And you'd think as a guy that's run a video production studio for 20 years, I'd say, you know, the most, most important thing is get the best cameras and the best lights and the best sound. And as important as that is, that is not the most important part of these kinds of videos. And again, you, you got to get a visual, uh, go watch some of our videos, go, go to the harmanbrothers.com. There's some really, really good examples out there. But the most important part is to hire the right actor. And a lot of people make the mistake of saying, well, I have a friend or there's an employee or I, I kind of took acting in college. No, there's a huge difference between this kind of video, which to the marketers, it's a top of funnel first impression video. It's what gets them into the sales funnel. Once you've done that, by all means, you know, create CEO videos and customer videos. Sure. This isn't that video. So I typically will go through dozens and dozens and dozens of auditions to find the right actor or actress for the job. Um, and it's a process that actually doesn't cost any money. A lot of people don't realize that. I can yeah. typically I'll look through about a hundred online reels. So I'm looking at their headshot. I'm not look, I'm not judging what do they look like? That's the last thing I care about. I'm looking for what do they feel like? Can they fit the character? And then I'll audition maybe 20 of them virtually. Um, they'll send in their audition tape. And then between me and the client and um, the group will decide, you know, which ones are the best. And then we'll bring maybe three or four of them back for a live in person in our studio or on Zoom because anyone can do a really good audition with no pressure and I've got 20 takes and I can pick the best one, but can they perform live? And also, will they add to the script? You're really looking for actors with experience with not only comedy, but improv. 
Mm. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of the times our best lines we never wrote. Actors will add them in or the camera's still rolling. And, you know, when multiple actors together, they play off each other. So uh, yeah. no, I, I would just I would just underline what you just said because um, my seventeen year old son is an actor and there's a massive there's such a I mean and it's been an education for us over the years um, you know as he's done it but there's a massive difference between somebody who's a trained actor and who's a really good actor and and as you said oh yeah as your buddy from accounting who's pretty funny yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, if it's from accounting, that just disqualifies him right there. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I just, that was an oxymoron. Yeah, for <laughs> accounting is funny. <laughs> so once, once you've got your actor, yes, it's important to make it look different to every other video that people are scrolling through. I mean, every other video out there is going to be shot on someone's iPhone. And so how do you make yours stand out and look different? Hire a professional crew. Now, some people don't have the budget. And if you go through the other steps, you can do a decent job with your iPhone. I mean, iPhones these days are way more, you know, higher quality than what we started out with 20 years ago. Um, so there's a technological advancement that everybody has that advantage, but a really good production team is going to know how to visually make things stand out. So step six, once you've shot everything, is you've heard the phrase, you know, comedy is all about timing. And that's true of the actor, but it's also true of the editor. The editor is almost the most important person in the whole project because he can make or break a video once it's in the can. You know, a line that's said this way can be cut in the middle and sped up and it'll feel completely different. So having a, an editor who really knows what they're doing is really important. And then what we do is with each video that we do where the client has, you know, the, the budget to do it, we produce 32 different versions of the same video Wow! because we're testing. It's, I don't want to go to Vegas and put it all on black 52 and have one chance of winning. I recently did a LinkedIn vlog where I showed the difference, same video, three completely different opening five second hooks version one did a 2.0 return on ad spend version two did a three and version four did a 4.1 so the complete difference same video just the different opening hook and that's why we will typically write and film and edit three different opening hooks three different offers and then we'll do the long version the short version we'll do a square version for mobile a widescreen version for youtube so i'm giving the digital team that's going to be actually pushing this out the best chance of success by testing yeah and, and i think that's such a it's such a critical part because i do think um you know there's a lot of stuff that's just thrown out there now or people go through think you've done all the process up to that that once you have a finished product you're good to go yeah and a lot of the time, I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years. A lot of the time, our gut reaction is wrong. And you, you just won't know that unless you test it. Um, and that is step seven, is testing. Make sure, and, and maybe I should break a few hearts right now. Hmm. What we do is not create organically viral videos. If you are going to build a business based on, let's, make a video and hope it goes viral, you might as well take your money to Vegas because that is gambling. What we do is we create videos that when you spend a dollar to promote it on Facebook or on YouTube or on LinkedIn or wherever the platform that your target audience is most likely to be, when you spend a dollar to promote it, you get three, four, five dollars in return every single time. It's repeatable, it's predictable. You can scale up and you can build a business based on, on that kind of predictability. It's kind of like, you know, if I was to say, I'll build you a vending machine that's full of hundred dollar bills, but it costs $20 to use it. How many times would you want to use that? And so when you see videos like ours that have a hundred million views, that means those are profitable or else the client wouldn't continue spending the money to rack up those views. So it's yeah, a, it's a, yeah. it's a mind shift. 
Yeah, no, I do think because I, I think, uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people see those viral ones and they think, oh, yeah, if I could just do something funny and cool. And they don't realize that 99.99999% of those type of videos get three views or less or something like that. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it used to be a, a decade ago that that did happen. But nowadays, the platforms are too sophisticated. They can immediately spot the difference between a commercial and someone's cat video. That cat video can get as many million views as they want. Facebook is fine with that. The second I'm selling something, the algorithm is going to treat that completely different. And if you think that that's going to go viral, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Not in this day and um, age. Yeah. So, so Joseph, without getting too much into it, I mean, from what you do, I mean, I presume there's different, you know, different levels for, di for different people, but you know, to somebody who's watching this, who thinks like this all sounds fantastic, but it sounds like it's, it's very, very costly. What would you say to them? I would say if they don't know video production, it will sound costly, but if they know it, we actually, our goal was always to be the affordable version of these kinds of videos. So, you know, some of the videos that you would have seen out there, the big ones, you know, they cost a million dollars plus. However, I know a lot of those have made their money back, you know, within a day or two because they were so right. good. Um, you know, we, our goal is to do what other companies are doing for hundreds of thousands of dollars for the low tens of thousands of dollars. So that'll give you just a, a good idea. But I, I'm not going to say that's all you need. That's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is you got to allocate your marketing budget to realize, you know, I need to spend a couple of hundred dollars a day per video to be able to get it out there to see the statistically significant results. But, you know, I'll tell you that we've had campaigns where, in fact, a recent campaign, we literally became the, cl the client's worst enemy because within two weeks of releasing the video, they sold out of 100% of their inventory and then now back ordered three months from China because of the chain, the supply chain oh, issues. So yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, plan yeah. and be ready for the success that this kind of a campaign can bring you. Yeah, yeah. Well, good, good problems to have. Uh, yeah, we were down the other day uh, getting my son a new wetsuit for his surfing and the guy in the surf shop said it's not that much selection now because there's 20 million dollars worth of wetsuits sitting out in Long Beach. Harbor. Yep. Yeah. Coming in anytime soon. <laughs> I feel that pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Joseph, this has been fantastic. Uh, and as Joseph said, all of his information is going to be below the video and we'll put links to to the ebook, etc. Um, but before we go, I mean, you've pretty much outlined it here, but anything else you want to tell our audience about you and your company? No, I mean, I'd just say if any, if I encourage everyone, regardless of whether they think that they want to, you know, go full board and, and do the best that they can do, or just take some of these steps and integrate it into their marketing. Um, again, from my experience, these, this is the closer that you can become to the reason why people are coming to these platforms in the first place, which is primarily to be entertained, the more likely you are to connect with them. So if any, if anyone wants to chat with me about a campaign for your business, feel free to reach out. There's a form at the bottom of funnysalesvideos.com and, uh, I'd be glad to brainstorm with anyone. All right. Listen again. Uh, thanks, Joseph. And uh, I would actually, I, as I said, I would encourage you to uh, to reach out and have a look here and see if this is something that might be interesting for for your business. Goodness knows we we need more humor in the world right now. That's right. So it's always good humor. Good, good humor. <laughs> good, good, good humor. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, yes. Let's say there's a lot of interesting other stuff out there. So we yeah. can leave it at that. Well, listen, thanks again, Joe. So thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.